Hey foodies, welcome to a very special celebrity edition of Foodies of New England. You've seen Chef Barry Sexton on Food Network's Dinner Impossible, but today Chef Barry comes all the way up from Philadelphia to join us to help us turn out some great fall favorites and put a different spin on some cool weather classics. So stay with us because by the time the show is over, Chef Barry is going to turn you into a master of the braised turkey thigh the butternut squash couscous salad, and the sweet pear tart. You don't want to miss this show. Welcome back again, foodies. As we told you before, we've got Barry Sexton here with us today. Barry uh, flew all the way up from the city of brotherly love to bestow upon us some culinary love. Right, Barry? Absolutely. Yes. We're so, we're so happy to have you. It's really nice to have you I today. Appreciate Thanks for it. coming I'm, up. I'm glad to be here. Definitely. Now, this recipe, it sounds like it's, uh, it's something you might try to pull off on Dinner Impossible, you know? <laughs> But you tell me more about the recipe. It's kind of a New England type of recipe for the fall. It really makes sense for this time of year. Uh -huh. you know? Well, this is a great recipe because it has a lot of nutritional value. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those dishes uh, for what we're going to do. We're going to do a, a butternut squash mm. couscous. And that's really going to wake up all those vegetarians and make them go into a frenzy. <laughs> so it's definitely going to be very healthy for them. Yeah, well, you know, the couscous is loaded with carbs, right? Mm -hmm. The butternut squash is terrific because it's kind of like a superfood. It's got some great vitamin A, carotin, it's good for you. Um, the turkey itself is very lean meat, right? Absolutely. So we're Absolutely. looking good. Plus, this is going to be a dish that you can make, um, I almost want to say in lieu of a typical holiday mm -hmm. turkey dish. Well, Thanksgiving is coming. It's right around the corner. Yeah. It's got to think fly. fall. That's right. You got to think fall. Cut down on your cooking time and it's a very easy dish to make. So how do we start it? Well, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to get you to get the turkey thighs out of the refrigerator. I got it. All right. All right, and uh, why don't you hand me some rosemary? Get some right here, a nice sprig for you there. Yeah, thank you. And uh, why don't you season up the turkey okay. thighs themselves? Okay, sounds good. A little pepper and salt? Yep, a little pepper, salt, of course, on each side. I'm going to chop this rosemary up so you'll be able to use this, help season up and give uh, the turkey thighs themselves a little essence of flavor, shall we say. Yep, and I know a lot of people like to use uh, kosher salt too, especially in... Uh, uh, this is kosher salt that we're using and we want, we want to say that. Um, yeah. You can see it, it's got, it's got bigger grain, right? Mm -hmm. And you know something else while you're doing that? Once you get all that seasoned up, why don't we mm -hmm. start off with uh, sprinkle it with a little flour so we can make sure that it's dry. I'm going to turn the oven on and set the oven for us for 400 degrees. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to get this stove top working and so we'll be able to sear up the turkey thighs. Pretty, pretty simple dish to make, I think, Barry. Well, it's, it's nice. Like I said, it's, it Man, goes the, right along with the season. But the flavor is going to be explosive. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get into the, to the butternut squash couscous, and then, of course, you know, forget about the dessert that we're going to make. Just un unbelievable. It's going to be, this is a good dinner for sure. Why don't you hit that turkey thigh with the rosemary? Okay. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add a tablespoon of butter to our dish. Sorry, just a little oil, about a tablespoon of oil. I'm going to add in like a cup of slab bacon that's already been pre-diced. And we're going to allow the bacon itself to render. We want all that flavor to come out of that meat. And what's going to help this dish out really, Dominic, is, is we're going to sear that turkey thigh right 
into the fat that's going to be render, rendering out of the bacon. It's going to be very tasty. Right. Very tasty. So we just want to get that up and, you know, like uh, everyone at home right now can't smell this, but we can definitely smell it. Oh, we're working on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Next technology, Barry. Right. So we just want to let the, the, the slab bacon itself cook for maybe about like a minute mm -hmm. just to get that little flavor in the air and yep. then to render out some of that fat. And again, we just want to remove the, the meat slab. itself. Yeah. Straight out, you know, so that, that we're, at that rate, we're going to use one pan. And leaving all the juices behind. Right. Right. Big flavor coming. Right, absolutely. Now, you don't have to get all of the, the bacon out of the pan, but we got the majority of it out. Sure. What I'm going to do now is take this from you. Yep. And I'm going to go into the pan itself with the skin side of the turkey thighs down. Take care of that. So now we're just going to let this cook. Again, we have the fat that render out of the bacon. We have a little oil in the pan itself so we don't allow it to burn. Uh, so the, the pan's never going to get too hot and burn the butter and stuff like that. But we want to take this turkey thigh yeah. and uh, a lot, cook it on three to four minutes per side. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to cook it to a point where it's going to be like a golden brown. Right. But we definitely want to be able to sear that meat so we can allow that flavor to be on the inside. Lock, lock the flavor in well inside before it goes into the oven, a right? Absolutely. And remember, foodies, all the instructions and the timing is all on foodiesofnewengland.com. So you don't have to scribble furiously, just enjoy the show. All right, so like I said to you before, Dominic, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook the turkey thighs mm -hmm. three, four minutes per side until they're evenly brown all the way around. And I, I tell you right now, this is perfect. So I'm gonna take this plate, gonna put it right on here, the turkey thigh, and we're just gonna let that sit to the side. But you know what? Yeah. We're gonna add the onions in on the same pan. Yeah, when we add half right in, right in this little pan, it's gonna be good. Give them some more onions. People like onions. Don't be afraid. I love onions. Hey, Barry, hey, I'm Italian. Onions, garlic, they're all part of the culture, right? That's it. That's going to be perfect right there. And if you want, because we have that extra virgin olive oil, why don't you give it just a little squirt here? Yeah, and a this, is gonna, this is going to be good. Keep in mind, when we were cooking the... That's perfect. It's perfect. When we were cooking the turkey thigh, what we did was we rendered off the bacon fat. Mm -hmm. And th again, this is just gonna help build the flavors with the onions. And we're gonna let them cook for maybe like two minutes until they're translucent. Wow. All right, and um, you can grab the garlic, Dominic. We're gonna put the whole garlic right in. Uh, we also have a bay leaf. Put the bay leaf right in there. We'll let everything it all cook. In? Yep, everything right in. Absolutely, put the bay leaves in. And we're just gonna let this sweat. And it's gonna start, the onions are gonna start to color themselves. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, when we go to cook this dish, we're cooking it for an hour and a half, so the onions will be cooked when we put this in. Of course. But we want to build those flavors. And again, the bottom of the pan had a lot of bacon fat, right. olive oil. Remember, it had the one tablespoon of butter? Oh, yeah. So we wanted to make sure that all of that came out of the pan. And it's going to go right into the dish. And like I said, we just got to wait. So. Right now, Dominic, what we want to do yep. is we want to take our onions. There's two cups of onions that have cooked down with the garlic, with the bay leaf in it. It's perfect. We're going to go into the pot that we're going to actually use for the oven. Okay. So we're going to get all of the onions in there. I'm going to spread them out evenly. And I'm going to say, Dominic, can you put on top of the onions the seared uh, turkey thighs? It's and gonna I'm going to say with pleasure, Barry. It's nothing, like, it's nothing like having the sous chef. And I, I should know exactly what that's all about. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's so right. That's as, your, as, your, as your jacket displays. There you go. That should be on there. I'm no stranger to danger. That should be the actual that thing. That should huh? be it. That should be so it. So now at the same time, when we get rid of that, mm -hmm. and why don't you put, uh, grab the apple cider. And why don't you put in two cups of apple cider? 
And this is going to be good. Again, we, this is going right with that fall thing. It's going to be a, uh, apple cider is going to be in supermarkets everywhere. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to put inside of here uh, a cup and a half of uh, chicken stock. So this is going to be good. Mm -hmm. All right, so again, we're just getting all this ready for the oven. We're using a pot right now that is gonna be great for the oven. Yep. But we don't have a lid for that pot. Just take a piece of foil. Tin foil. Yeah. I'll make it hard. That's this right. is very simple. Just tuck just it inside. It in. That's it, all the right. way around. And right. that's it, that's what we're gonna do. How long are we gonna put that in the oven for, Baron? Well, this is gonna go in the oven for basically an hour and a half. And there's still one more thing that we have to do with this, but we're going to add some apples to this. This is going to bring everything back together. It's going to help introduce and marry all the flavors with the cider. We can't do it right yet because we need to cook this for an hour and a half. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is halfway through the cooking time, mm -hmm. we're going to take this, like remove it from the oven. Yeah. We're going to peel and quarter some apples down, add them, mm -hmm. and then we're going to put it back in for an additional 40 minutes. Okay. And then it's going to be perfect. Nice. So nice. why don't we get this in the oven now? Great. And then we can move on? Absolutely. Sure. Now, next step for us is definitely going to be after we come back from our break uh -huh. is to get going with the couscous. I can't wait. I, I love it. I can't wait. I'm really excited about this. You know, we'll be right back. Hi, Henry Kamasi here from Kamasi Masonry Supply, your home for hardscapes. With retail stores in Worcester and Charlton, we display everything from pizza oven and granite benches to natural stone and drivable grass. Our hours are 7 to 4, Monday through Friday, Thursday nights till 6, and Saturdays 8 to 12. And check us out on the web at kamasi.com, where you'll find coupons for our newest products that will help save you money on your next home project. Life is full of detours and roadblocks. Sometimes we need those speed bumps to determine our life's purpose. The best way to cope with change is to create it for yourself. Are you prepared to seize the opportunities? I'm Tom Ingrassia. My seminars, workshops, and individual coaching help you develop a roadmap to live into your dreams with vision, courage, determination, and passion. Full speed ahead, speed bumps and all. Hey foodies, we're back. And while we were away, Barry loaded in the couscous right into the water. Two and a half cups into boiling salted water. Nice. It's gonna be great. It's all floating to the top. Yep, almost ready, but I think you know what we need to do, Dominic? Exactly. We need to actually get this butternut squash. Oh yeah, we're gonna keep inside going. Inside the oven. So uh, let's, get, let's get cracking. And um, this is nice too. Uh, this, is, this dish that we're doing is the butternut squash couscous salad. So this, mm -hmm. this, is, this is great. Well, you know, I have to say that uh, without our, the help of our good friends at Pepper's Catering, mm -hmm. Barry, this wouldn't have been happening as quickly as it did because, as you know, you're coming up from Philadelphia. And the deal is they don't let you on the plane with a lot of food. Am I yeah, right? Yeah. So, Absolutely. And we so, definitely wanted to cook fresh food. Right. So you had to. And, and we had to reach out to uh, John Lawrence, who's the owner of Peppers, and uh -huh. also uh, our, good, our good friend, the executive chef, uh, Paul Wilson. Mm -hmm. He's terrific. And he put everything aside, put all of our recipe items aside. And you know, with something like that happening, everything's, everything's with us. Well, you know? you know what we can say, it's always good to have good friends that believe in fresh products also. Why don't we add those right in? And um, get rid of that. Let's grab the olive oil mm -hmm. right here. Yep. Just Give us a nice little squirt. We're gonna roast this in the oven for 10 to 12 minutes. Again, we're going in at 400 degrees. We right. Want to add a little salt and pepper on that? Yeah, you need it. You and then we're just going to give it a little toss. And just always put something in the oven as far as a pan that is not going to burn. This is a great pan right here. And we're going right into the oven. Great. Perfect. 
So you know what? While we're letting that roast, and again, 10 to 12 minutes, we're gonna let that roast. Why don't you grab the bowl? Um, like I said, our couscous is uh, ready here. We're gonna and strain it. We're gonna strain it, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And this, this is the easiest way to do it, is to grab a bowl like that. And I'm gonna turn it like this. Sorry about that, Dominic. Please, no trouble at all. Hate the... <laughs> uh, there we go. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this, Dominic, and I'm gonna let this drain right here in the pot like that. And if you can grab the platter over there, cause you know, once we pull this out and we let this drain, yeah. it's nice when we could just, you know, you got the majority of the water off of this. Like I said, you just let it sit, give it a little shake. Yeah, the couscous smells great. Oh yeah, it but really the, you does. know, you, you just do this, just like that and let the water drain. Yeah, you got Once it. the water drain, you want to take your pan, go right in, just like so. Nice. Just want it to be a little flat, just like that. Mm -hmm. And then all I'm going to ask you to do is just put it over there, let it let it cool off a little bit, and that's what we're going to do. Absolutely. That smells terrific, Barry. I got to tell you. Okay. So we're going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of this pot right here. And you know what? Um, while we're letting that cool, I'm mm -hmm. going to pull out our butternut squash. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is ready. And then we just, you know what, let's just set that to the side. Let that cool also mm -hmm. while we're waiting for the couscous to cool. I mean, yeah. so let's let both of them come down to room temperature for a little sure, bit. Sure, sure, okay. But you know, during the break, one, one thing that I was working on is I was working on peeling the apple mm -hmm. and of course dicing it down because we're going to put all of this together and I, I think it's going to be great when we uh, put all these flavors together. So the apple goes into couscous as well and then also, we drop some apple into our uh, we, Right, our so we, we're going right towards this whole fall thing. And yeah. this whole fall thing, like I said before, is pulling all those flavors yeah. for this time of the year when people think about it. Yeah. I want to take this bowl right here, because mm -hmm. this is when we're going to actually mix the salad in okay. too, that we're going to use for the couscous and everything. Okay. So we're going to hold that for right here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. We have some parsley up front that we already washed. And for this recipe, I like to put a, a cup of parsley into it. So can you dice that up and when sure. you get finished, can you put it right in there? And I think after you get finished that, then we're going to be able to put this whole salad together. I mean, this is going to be perfect. Absolutely. What I'm going to do, if uh, everyone remember what we were talking about earlier, we were talking about the dish itself, which was the braised turkey thighs that we have in the oven. We said halfway through, we were going to remove them from the oven and add in the apple. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to work on that right here. Uh, you don't mind we share the board, do you? Please, Barry. I mean, uh, too I much of a gentleman. I just need a little space. That's it. Just a little space. I'm more accustomed to hearing, get out of my way. No, oh, no, 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 no. We can't do that. All chefs aren't mean. I just want to say that, you know? <laughs> you know what, Dominic? Uh, yeah. Got the apples chopped for our turkey thighs that we have in the oven. Great. We're just going to set this aside right now because I think we, we should probably put this whole put this away. Let's put this whole couscous salad together. Let's, Let's do put it. it together. Let's this is called together. vegetarian love right here. <laughs> you, why don't you put the, the couscous right in the bowl? All right. All right. Let's go. Parsley's chopped. Everything else is looking good. I'm going to add in the roasted butternut squash. This is like three cups. I'm just going to add this right in. Uh, Dominic, why don't, why don't you um, add in your parsley? Why don't you wake it up? Uh, grab the lemon and uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to add in uh, two cups of chopped apples. Love the lemon zest. I'm going to add uh, a cup of uh, dried cranberries. And um, oh, that really looks good, Dominic. I'm going to add a uh, half a cup of uh, dried apricots that have been sliced. Again, we're just adding color, color, building flavor on flavor. We're going to let all of this marry together. And I'm going to add a, a half a cup of toasted pine nuts to this. Um, definitely add your salt and pepper. Definitely do that. And then, uh, again, we're just going to stir up all of this. But, you know, you're going to be in charge of the seasoning. This is nice. Uh, make sure you go to the bottom of the bowl, too, so we can just make sure all the colors are equal. You got everything in here. Your pine nuts in here. Some, there's, you know, a little protein in that, right, of course. Absolutely. There's some carbohydrates with a couscous. Yeah, you know what, Dominic, why, why don't you add some olive oil to this? Yeah, it's getting a little dry, Barry. Yeah, we can getting gloss a it dry. up a little bit. Yeah. That's going to be good. It's like the Italian pure oil, you know. Yeah, there you go. You know what, while you're stirring that up, I'm going to get the pot of the turkey thighs right out. So we can add the apples in. Oh, yeah. That's going to taste nice. The, the nice citrus apple up against the, uh, 
the gaminess of the turkey, right? Oh yeah, this is gonna be really good. Smell out of the off, right out of the oven, straight out is, phew. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm, let me get rid of these. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'm just gonna put this right over here. Put that plate on a little closer. Hate drips on the stove, you know what I mean? That's all right. You know, this is a this Thermador stove. Very forgiving. There you go. It cooks fast and cleans up easy. Yeah, well, Can't ask for more. I like that. All right, why don't you add in the apples? Yes, I can. I'm just this gonna drop gonna them in. Hands are clean. Eliminate a little of the splish splash. And you know, we, we gotta keep in mind, like we said before, that we're gonna cook this halfway. Mm -hmm. So it's already been 40 minutes. Right. We're gonna add, why don't we add, add in the bacon. Okay. All right. And again, we're gonna put the turkey thighs back on top of the apples. Right over it. Right over, don't forget. They're resting on a blanket of flavor. Oh, that's it, don't forget. And we're gonna do this. Back in for another 40. Right in for another 40. Still on 425, right? Absolutely. This smells really good. And we didn't want to put the apples in beforehand because then they would turn into just smush. Yeah. Right now we want a little crunch from the yeah. apple. Yeah. So we'll place it back into the oven right now. Okay. All right. And you know something? We're getting along pretty well. You want to try some of this? Absolutely. Yeah. Viva Bene, Italian Ristorante has the finest food and the best service. In Italy, we say chi mangia bene, vive bene. Who eats well, lives well. Viva Bene is perfect for a night out or just to relax in our new lounge. We also do dinner and theater packages. Just across from the DCU Center, close to the Food and Theater and Mechanics Hall. So if you wanted to eat the best Italian food, come over to Viva Bene at 144 Commercial Street, downtown Worcester. To culinary enthusiasts everywhere, there is one icon that rises above all others. One that's been empowering them for more than 70 years. One who continues to establish a new standard of Epicurean achievement. At Thermador, we create products that aren't for everybody. Only for those who insist on true cooking performance. Thermador, an American icon. Hudson Appliance, one of the largest appliance showrooms in New England, brings you vast selections of brand name appliances at low warehouse pricing. The knowledgeable and friendly sales staff will help you find a perfect replacement appliance or guide you through the most difficult kitchen renovations. Come check out the great selection of Energy Star products. Not only will you save money on your utility bills, but you'll save on dishwashers starting at $199 and front load washers starting at $399. Hudson Appliance, for saving, selection, and all your appliance needs. So we're back, foodies, for the final wrap-up, and this is the last leg of our dinner improbable. And here we go. This is the grand finale. This yeah. is it. Well, this is the uh, sweet pear tart, right? Absolutely. And it's actually pretty easy to make. You've got stuff that anybody can pick up at a supermarket, pears. All, ba all basic ingredients. Yeah. Really simple, and this is, this is great because I think after you cook the meal that we've cooked, sure. you want to do something that's simple, but yeah. everyone wants dessert at the end of the meal. That's right, and it happens quick. You got some, some applesauce, and that's giving you the pulp, the sweetness that you need, right? Yep. A little bit of pear. Um, frozen food section, you can pick up your, your pie crust, right? Right, in any one supermarket. Nice, all right. So why don't we uh, get started? Absolutely, let's roll it out. First thing I want to do is, be, we're not going to need a rolling pin for this. This is, this is great. We just want to unfold our dough, mm -hmm. again, that we got from the supermarket. We're going to cut and divide our dough into basically three sections. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to do. We want to drop that over. We're going to go to the center of a sheet tray mm -hmm. that we lined with parchment paper. I'm just going to pull that right out, get that like that. Mm -hmm. And then I just want to brush, watch this, this is like, this is like kids play here. You're just going to brush the edges with water. Just like that. No egg yolks, no... Uh, Nothing, no. just water. Because I'm telling you, this recipe is all about what everyone has inside of their own, what? Kitchen. There you go. So we're going to cut strips now. Mm -hmm. We're using a French knife just to make sure that we cut nice, even, not smushed strips mm -hmm. of puff pastry. 
I'm gonna take a little bit off the top. I'm just taking off like maybe a half an inch. Yeah. All right. And then I'm gonna cut another strip, which if you're paying attention, that's three strips we're cutting. <laughs> there you go. Now I'm gonna remove this one strip that we're gonna use. Try not to work with the dough too much. I'm just gonna remove it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna cut it the same size. And we can also butter uh, those sections you're putting down too. Right, Barry, if you wanted to? You, you could, you know? But I tell you, the water is, is, makes it very simple. You put that on the end. Mm -hmm. We already put down water on the other side, so we're gonna go like this, mm -hmm. all right? We're just making a box. We're gonna go this like this. This is like Lincoln Logs. Yeah, that's it. For we're foodies. Gonna, that's it, and then we're just gonna go with a little more water. And listen, you don't have to be real perfect with this. This is very rustic. Yeah. And this is gonna work out really good. So don't think that you have to be a professional. Again, we're only using water. Well, it's gonna puff up into layers like, like a phyllo dough, right? Absolutely. So this mm -hmm. is what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut our fourth strip right now. Mm -hmm. And again, we're just gonna cut it in half. You could just eye it, because we're just gonna put it on. And again, all the detail foodies are going to be on foodiesofnewengland.com. There you go. And Barry's exclusive recipe. Just like that. Now, Dominic, you get to do the hard stuff. <laughs> and the hard stuff is, I'm gonna get rid of this extra dough. The hard stuff is, you're gonna put a little bit of brown sugar and cinnamon mixture that we have um, right in the center. No problem. Right in the center, right on the pastry. And it doesn't have to be perfectly spread out, correct? Right, but you definitely wanna crumble it a little bit. There you go. Yeah. There you go. We're gonna make sure that that, because you know what we're doing is we're making a dessert. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Then we're gonna actually put on maybe about three tablespoons of applesauce. You're gonna put it right dead smack in the center of the square. Just like that, that's perfect. Now what I have is I have some pears that we already peeled, mm -hmm. took the center out, and we're just gonna slice them down. Found that's all. My, my favorite part right here. You're gonna smash it. Fan it down. Fan it down. You're gonna go right on top, just like that. Stay inside your little lines. It's okay if you come out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Again, you wanna use pears that are somewhat ripe. All right? Get a little bit of tartness from, from pears that aren't very ripe, correct? Right, that's it. And, and like I said before, if you, if you do this good, you better get them directly right in there. Mm -hmm. Right in. I wanna take a little knife, and I just wanna put a little butter on there. Just like so. Mm -hmm. And I think that little butter is gonna melt down on the pear. It's gonna be perfect. And what you could do for me, my friend, is you could put a little bit of brown sugar cinnamon on there again, because we just want the people to know that we're making dessert. Just like that, just a little bit. There you go. And you know the people are at home are saying, Dominic, be generous. And now I'm gonna say we're ready to put it in the oven. Oh yeah. It's gonna take about 12, 20 minutes. You're definitely gonna just keep looking um, cause you'll be able to tell with the oven light on, but at the same time, mm -hmm. it's gonna take about 20 minutes. It'll puff up in brown, right? Absolutely, to a golden. What's the temperature on that, Barry? It's 400 degrees. 400 degrees, okay. Yep. This is uh, Petite Syrah, blended with a little red Zinfandel and just a sliver, 7% of Tempranillo from Spain. This is made by a gentleman by the name of Clave Rock. He's the winemaker at uh, uh, Wild Horse. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, Zaca Mesa out in California. So he's, he's a pretty accomplished winemaker. And this has is a, a big, nice nose on it. It does, it's full of bramble fruits, you know, a lot of boysenberry, black cherry, um, blackberry fruit up front, a little That's bit of mild. Way to intensify the, the, the whole thing that we're doing. A little bit of mild cigar tobacco and, 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 and some dried mint too. Closes out with some nice vanilla and sweet oak too. So let's pull our plates together, but first I want to thank you. Hey. You're doing a great job. Thank you.